if we take any, any circumstance, so uh, whether the label on this chart is a million pounds or whether this, the, this chart is called a broken leg or whether this chart is called losing a loved one or whether this chart is called uh, getting married. So we could call all of those external circumstances. Would that be fair? Now, getting married to someone you love, okay? One, two, three, four. Does anyone have either number one or number four as their favorite preference off that list? Anyone in this room? Yeah? Me too. Given the choice of one or four versus two or three, it's like, yeah, I think I'll tend in that direction. Now, if we take any of those circumstances and stick it on a chart with X thousands of people, we're going to have a certain percentage of those people who say, best thing that ever happened to me. A million pounds. You'll have a bunch of people saying, best thing that ever happened to me. You'll have a bunch of thing, people saying, ruined my life. And you'll have a bunch of people saying, it was all right. And if it's the million pounds, they'll say, oh, you know, the first couple of weeks, I was euphoric, I was blown away, that sort of thing. Then life kind of settled down. Obviously, the circumstances of life changed, but things were pretty much, you know, my, my felt experience of it was pretty much like it used to be. You'll have a bell curve. Broken leg, you'll have a bell curve. Losing a loved one, you'll have a bell curve. Getting married, you'll have a bell curve. Now, does that make sense so far? Is it okay if the answer is no? Sure. I, I just don't see that anybody would say losing a loved one was the best thing that had ever happened to them. I, I can appreciate... Well, okay. Now, so I think that's a fair point. Would you like to find out if there are any counterexamples to that? Oh, well, I, I'm sure there are counterexamples, but I don't know that counterexamples indicate a trend. And I would say that out of 100 people, maybe 98 would say a million pounds was great. Two might say it had negative effects. I'd say it would probably be the converse with, say, a broken leg. You might be able to find somebody who was like, yeah, I broke my leg, and before I was... I used to beat people up in town and now I can't, so I've realized that's not a good thing to do, and now I'm a humanitarian. But the gem I'm, I'm, not, I'm not being flippant, but the trend would be that most people would say that was a bad thing. Oh, t too true. That's why, that's why it's called a bell curve. And so it'll be at different points on the, the... But this isn't the bell curve of what people would prefer. This is the bell curve of their actual experience. So if you take the bell curve of preference, that all shifts that way. If you say to anyone, it should all shifts that way for broken leg and losing a loved one. It all shifts this way for million pounds and find my soulmate. Because what we think is, you, know, you got to remember, Johnny, we live in a world where it looks to us and where pretty much everyone we speak to will violently agree that their experience is coming from their circumstances. So you ask people what they prefer, the bell curve for unpleasant things is going to be way over that thing, that way, and the bell curve for nice things is going to be way over that way. But if you take people's actual experience, and you can look at the research on it, there's a, a paper that I have on my computer about lottery winner and from the Journal of uh, Social Psychology or something, about lottery winners and uh, people who have become paraplegic in accidents. Read the research on it. No net effect on their level of well-being, clarity, peace of mind, security. 
massive operational effects. Are you kidding me? Becoming paraplegic or quadriplegic? That's going to turn your life upside down, from a, a person's life upside down from an operational perspective. But no net effect on their, their, experience, their felt experience of life. So absolutely, in terms of preference, there's gonna, the bell curve shifts way over when you ask people in advance. But it's, it's a well-known fact that people are notoriously rubbish at predicting how circumstances will affect them. They're rubbish at it. We all are. Me too. The, how many people do you know who had something that they were terrified of happening and then it happened and it turned out to be, they said, best thing that ever happened? Who knows someone like that? Who is someone who's had that happen? I've had it happen on numerous occasions in my life. What about the other way around, where someone has said, oh, I know everything would great, be great if I just had such and such or so and so, and then it turned out to be a poison chalice. Now, I'm not, I'm not trying to make you wrong or anything. I'm just trying to point you in a direction. Because what I heard you say was, a thought occurs to me that I've had thousands of times, which is, and then you laid out the million bucks versus something horrible. And you've had that thought thousands of times. So I'd like to suggest that it probably qualifies as habitual patterns of thought that are keeping a certain story about reality in place. Now, I've explored this stuff. And so I see overwhelming evidence to the contrary. But none of it is going to be strong enough to uh, break through a habitual pattern of thinking until you're willing to, or unless you're willing, to kind of loosen your grip on it a little bit? Like, are you open to the possibility that despite the fact that you've thought it thousands of times, that that might not be the case? Are you willing to open, not, not, I'm, I'm not saying to, to give it up, I'm just saying, are you willing to open to that possibility that despite the fact that it looks very, very real to you, that it might not be the case? 